we are live. All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Doc for Blades and Blasters. We are on our third and I believe final session of Call of Cthulhu uh, Amongst the Ancient Trees, uh, one of the modules put out by Chaosium. And this is a one shot that has turned into three sessions. Uh, the RP has just been that good. Now, when we last left our group of intrepid investigators, they, they uh, followed the blood trail of a young, uh, who they believed to be artist, uh, who they, whose body they found in the woods. They followed that blood trail, uh, eventually coming across the path of a, uh, what would look like a worn path that a vehicle was traveling on, where they came into contact with a truck who was part of a uh, survey team uh, that was that was uh, doing a geological survey for Mr. Strong, actually, uh, in the water department. Um, he says that there's a group of them working further north, um, and they've been uh, clearing out uh, some areas uh, using dynamite, uh, using whatever whatever tools they have at their disposal, uh, and whatever it is that they're they're whatever kind of business it is they're conducting at the survey site. Uh, there's they've been doing that. Um, the group, uh, the group uh, continued following the blood trail after uh, the survey team uh, truck left, uh, continued on north on its own, and the group continued on uh, following the blood trail where they finally came across a, gr a uh, group of tents. Now this group of tents was indeed uh, the camping site of the artists that they were told about uh, in the first session on the first day. Um, the artists that were out here uh, painting, you know, still lifes of nature. And it was out here where it looked like there was maybe some signs of struggle, things were thrown about, strewn about, and they found not only some disturbing paintings, but also signs that, uh, that uh, another hunter and his son had been by at some point. Uh, that they were told about on the first day as well. Uh, there was there was a man and his boy that were, they were told about who was wearing a large Texan hat uh, on the first day. And here they found a large Texan hat off in the shrubs and the bushes, uh, along with a hunting rifle. So there, there was some indication that they might have come through here um, at some point as well. And then the paintings that they found was the most disturbing aspect of it. The paintings depicted their nightmares, uh, the nightmares that they had had the previous night, uh, the nightmares of cabins, the nightmares of lakes with creatures, the nightmares of, of dead yellow uh, leaves and trees, um, drowning, chest pain, uh, just significant and strong nightmares here in in painting form uh just looking back at them uh, because of that um, samuel has become a little more shook uh and aldous despite his his strong will uh it it it, it shook him just a little bit as well um but for the most part uh, everyone has decided uh that they need to move on and it is the beginning of the third day. And if there's anything else that needs to be brought up, uh, you guys can go ahead and bring it up. Otherwise, you can kind of uh, role play the beginning of the third day. <clears throat> so let me get this right, Deputy. You're saying we are going to follow these tracks up to that lake uh, where we saw the thunder and lightning and the crashes and the booming sounds and whatever else there's up there including that odd looking i mean odd not odd looking odd speaking man we met the other day am i getting it all well i think that about get words uh we came out here with a job and we're gonna stick to that. I I get it. There's a there there are 
a lot of stuff. People are getting a little crazy. We've come across a few things, some unpleasant, unsavory things and characters. Well, I think we, we must press on. Yes, yes, in, indeed, indeed. Uh, I, I think you can count me uh, partially as among them who, who have kind of been affected by what we have seen and I do agree we have a job to do and a girl to find but 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 you see um, uh, uh, um, no spit it out well well the sooner we stop our stuttering and get the girl the uh, sooner we can get out of here yes I, I yes uh, Mr. Stevens makes a point. Look, I just I want to leave as much as you do, but we gotta get the girl. That's uh, number one priority. Yes. Agreed. Well, okay. I I just I just hope that when we get there, there is something about of the girl we can find, or I hope she has not been driven as crazy as some people I know. You know, uh, yeah. Well, we won't know unless we get there. Exactly. Uh, well, well, let me ask you one more question, Deputy. Uh, when we do get there, at what point do we say that uh, we have stepped over the line and uh, I don't think we want to see any more of this and uh, we should go back home? Uh, you know, uh, at some point, one must you know, worry about one's uh, um, life, I see, you know? Mm. Mm. Well, if you want to worry only about your life, that's your decision. No, 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 you but do misunderstand me, Deputy. I, I mean, all our lives, right? I mean, so far, it looks like I'm the only one who wants to protect myself. I, I do agree, I do agree, I do agree. But, but you see, once we get there, and if things are not what they seem, and all four of us are in danger. At, at at what point, at what point do you think that we should turn back? I, I just I just want to know. So you know, when I see that point, I can let you know that I saw that point, and it's time to go back home now. You know. Well, you pose a very good question, but I'm pressing on as far as, as far and as long as it takes. And if we find that girl, we find that she's dead. We're, we're taking her out of here. And it's at that point, for me, that I say, it's okay to turn back. Okay, that's, I, I, I guess that, that's, that's, a, that's a fair point. Uh, I, I just request you all that, you know, if the shooting starts, or when it starts, j just tend not to stand too close to me, as I'm not sure what I'll be shooting at. But, you know, just a fair warning. I, I'll do what I can to find the girl. The hell's about this? Why don't you hand me that weapon of yours? Uh, no, 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 no. It, it, it gives me some comfort. I will not point at any of you. I am pretty sure of that. I can get you the stick if you want. Um, you mind if well, I take a quick look, though? You. No, even if it doesn't shoot, it's okay. It's It still gives me some comfort that I have a gun in my hand. Uh, I, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Yes, yes, yes. How, how's about we uh, put the safety on, eh? Uh, I believe the safety is on. Uh, yes, yes, the safety is on. The safety is on. For sure. The foot. Right, maybe take some of the bullets now? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'll follow you guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll follow you guys. Yes. Maybe you should uh, stand in front. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yes. Speaking sure, sure, sure. That thing. Yes, I'll stand in front. Right here. Right here. Now don't be getting all crazy on us, all right? This is a loaded firearm. Yes, yes. I am doing the best I can to have my wits about myself and keep the loaded firearm pointing forward at whatever comes at us. Y yes. As long as not people. How, how about you point it? And keep your finger off the trigger. Uh, that's a good point, deputy. The finger is off the trigger. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, uh, Deputy, you mind if I have a word with you over there? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I want to walk away from Samuel real quickly. 
Now that boy, that boy ain't right. I don't trust him with no gun. Look at him, he's jittery. Last night he was jumping at shadows. I have no doubt if we leave him with that weapon, he's gonna pop one off in one of our skulls. And that ain't gonna do no good finding the girl. Well, I don't know so much about this character. It, it, then his character, rather, too to use the weapon on us. I'm not saying... I, I know he's he, jittery. And I know he could be dangerous. But so far, he hasn't done anything to lead me to suspect that he's going to turn on any of us. I'm not saying he's going to do it intentionally. I'm saying he's going to get himself, or worse, one of us hurt. Mm -hmm. Why don't you uh, take a look at this real quick? I want to look for like a pebble or a little rock on the ground. Yeah, Able there's, to, yeah, easily find one. Uh, I want to pick one up and I want to toss it near his foot. Okay, so you, you toss it and um, Samuel's standing there kind of uh, holding tight onto his gun. Uh, he's holding it close to him, close to him, almost like, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, something, something precious and protecting him. And he's looking around to his left and his right, and he's just kind of looking up and around in the sky. When, when Samuel, all of a sudden, you hear a skitter, 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 like a little thunking on the ground next to you. Um, where would you say the, um, the the stone landed? It, it it landed, you know, probably a foot behind a foot behind you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so within close proximity okay so as soon as the um as soon as the uh, the, the stone lands samuel will kind of whip around and you know be like deputy mr pinnery i think there's somebody out here somebody just threw a stone <clears throat> um and he kind of like he's uh, he's moving the gun around right um towards where the stone was thrown um in that in that general direction did you see who threw the stone? Did you see? Did you see that? How about stop waving the gun around? There are more of us here than just you. We all are keeping our eyes open. We're all aware. It's okay, sir. Let's see what just, I'm talking about, sure. Just calm down. Okay. If you say so. But I definitely felt the stone hit my leg. Just take it easy. Okay. There. You have three other people with you. We're. We're gonna keep an eye on you, and hopefully, you'll keep an eye out for us. And for God's sake, stop whirling that gun around. Okay. Uh but you, 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 I'd, I'd hate, I'd hate to have to take it from you. No, no, I, I'm. See, I didn't shoot anything. I, 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 I just, I just warned you all that somebody just threw a stone at me, right? And and you all didn't see it. Though all the three of you are looking at me, you all didn't see anyone throw a stone at me. But I definitely felt a stone. Uh, okay, okay, I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll keep quiet now. Mm, I'll, I'll just stand here in the corner. Um, let me know when, when you want to leave. Mm. Oh, uh, okay. Samuel will, uh, or sorry, um, Henry will walk over to Samuel and, uh, kind of, um, rub the guy's shoulder. Don't worry, man. Uh, we got you. Nothing's gonna happen. Hey, Henry. I don't know what yeah. those two are talking about, but, but, uh, just don't let me die here, okay? You know? I'm not gonna leave. I I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to die here. Not 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 in not in this place. Not with everything we've seen. I I don't want to go to that 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 yellow place and that lake. I think that's where you go when you die. I I don't know, but don't let me die here. I won't let you die here. Okay. I don't want to go to this yellow lake either. But I feel like if we do, then whatever's happening here or 
whatever questions we have will at least be answered. Okay. I don't want them to be answered, but I understand. Okay. I, I'll watch your back and, and, and you watch my back. I think, I don't think Mr. Pinnery likes me very much. Uh, and uh, the deputy is just too focused on the girl. So uh, just, you know, uh, just, just keep an eye on me and I'll keep an eye on you. Promise. Don't worry. Got my eyes on you. Uh, you'll be okay. So as everyone's finishing up their conversations and they're, you know, they're airing their concerns about Samuel and Henry is comforting Samuel. Um, Aldous, go ahead and make a, 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 was it a tracking test or what is it they call it? He, was he doing spot hidden? I've got track, I've got survival, I've got spot hidden. Yeah, yeah, because you were following tracks to get into here. So, you know, as you're talking to, to the deputy and kind of, you know, walking around the perimeter and you, you guys are having your discussion, at the same time, you, just the hunter in you, the tracker in you, uh, is keeping your eye out and, and looking for the trail that you followed in here. Um, and you're pretty certain that it does not continue on any further. So that blood trail you followed in here from the young man, uh, this is where it originated from uh, because the blood trail doesn't go any further than this location here, uh, this campground. So it originated here and ended up where you originally found it. Uh, so there is no more trail or no more uh, to track leading out of this camp, just what you followed into this camp. All right, everyone. Now look here. Whatever it was that killed that young man, it came from here. He managed to crawl pretty far, all things considered, but I don't think we're going to find it on this trail. It's just and then I'm sorry you, I couldn't hear you yeah that was digital sorry um okay uh Mr. Pinnery what is your suggestion then no uh, I mean uh I guess there's nothing here to be honest with you I'm kind of lost well we're going towards the lake That's my suggestion. We keep pressing on. We find this lake. Go toward the lights. At least we know there's something up there. Mm. Uh, I suppose so. I guess we should be off then. All right, everybody. Round up whatever you need. We're getting ready to move about. Out of character, so what you're saying is we need to hike back all the way to the place we met the truck? At the very least, yeah. So you you have two real choices as far as tracks or trails or whatever that you were that you were uh, you either following or you wanted to follow. Uh, you mentioned at one point you wanted to follow the the tire tracks north to where the the uh, uh, the lake is survey the survey site was. Um, but then there is also the trail that you were tracking from the kidnappers uh, that you that you were following on day one that you split off from uh, once you found the blood trail. Right, but that was like a day and a half back yeah yeah so uh, so okay so yeah the, the first day we were following the kidnappers tra trail then we saw the blood and that knife and that man and we started following that that trail then we met the truck that was going up to the survey point which was near the lake we didn't follow the truck we chose to continue to follow the blood trail 
that's when we camped the next day in the morning we saw these tents and then we we brought ourselves over here now if i'm not mistaken was there um additional drag marks leaving from this site somewhere else or am i mistaken like uh, we saw all the pic- the paintings strewn around and for some reason i felt in the last session it looked like there was one more trail heading out from here it looked like people were dragged away or um or maybe i'm confused mm, let me let me uh, go back and confirm that just a little okay. bit yeah the one who's when who's cipher's talking about, about that i feel like i remember something similar because we said we found the cap and the rifle i think closer to the woods but there was nobody around it and yeah like back in yeah, here correct. behind one of the tents in a, in a bush correct. and then we came back to the center and then found oh well, you're you're right you're right yeah there was drag marks um what direction did they go leading they're they're leading north right and, and and that was that was the direction of the light which we said that we were going to follow that the next day i believe yeah, there was like okay. explosions and everything going okay on. okay yep so so there are drag marks leading north um or they're okay yep that's that's true all right let me uh, kind of rewind here a little bit so um from the previous night you remember seeing drag marks uh leading from the area from the brush uh where the where the hat and rifle were found okay uh looks like there was some kind of conflict and scuffle and someone was dragged through the brush uh your other choice is to follow the blood trail back to the to the uh, tire tracks and follow that north to the survey team um or you can go all the way back to the to the uh, kidnappers trail that you were following from day 1 so those those are those are really your your three options as far as uh what you would want to do uh, as you continue looking for this kidnapped girl okay uh, and just to get some more some more clarification the the point where we met the truck that's at least a day's hike from where we are right now correct if i'm not mistaken because we camped the previous night after after hiking for almost an entire day well you you had been walking for a while already when you had hit the hit the truck so it's it's less than a day's hike okay like a couple you, hours <clears throat> yeah yeah you're not you're not that far from the tire tracks and again out of character basically the choices are if we follow the current drag marks we would now start going back into the thick of the forest not knowing where it goes while if we exactly. while if we hike back to the truck point we would be at least following the the rough road on which the truck traveled to get to the lake that's that's correct the to the uh, survey okay. site okay which is which is which uh aldus knows you know further up north that way that there is a lake up there somewhere okay um so back in it which where we going to go then i think we should head north then to the lake but should we follow the tracks or should we follow these drag marks is the question well are any of you curious to see where this leads surprisingly yes I am indeed. And then let's go. Because we don't know if maybe these kidnappers happen to come across this camp. Maybe took somebody else. We don't know. Oh, we know they stabbed someone. Perhaps. Anyway, let's gather up whatever we had. get ready to move out. Yep, exactly. Mr. Pinnery, take the lead, please. Uh, deputy, before, before before we head out, uh how are we doing on supplies? Uh 
is there something we can take from these huts that could help us on the way maybe mm, you know food um, lamps i don't know um um character here didn't uh, uh they searched the tents when, when they first arrived isn't that correct i think uh you guys searched the tents after you came yeah i didn't think we found anything really of, of any use did we oh. well i mean as as far as you know food and things like that of course these people were out here camping and they planned on being out here for a while so there are some provisions there's some you know food uh, non-perishables that kind of thing uh there's so, there's so. more than enough if you guys need to you know restock your supplies so to say um right. then then you're able to do that okay um all right yeah I'll, the deputy will um turn back to samuel and say well mr montgomery I, that is uh it's not a bad idea let's let's go ahead and get whatever else we may need and then press on indeed indeed deputy uh i'll, I'll be right on it Henry, uh, would you mind coming with me while you look for supplies sure okay and samuel tries to get you know food maybe like an oil or kerosene for the lamps you know just basically resupply yeah. <clears throat> the deputy will see this as uh, Samuel is beginning to really kind of buddy up to Henry here and he starts to get a little suspicious he's trying to figure out what or if there's an a angle there so he'll pull Mr. Pinnery in Will you help me search over here? Uh, I figured, sure. I mean, yeah, let's do it. Break off and head over to the side over here. Now, I'll just do... I'm sure you've seen it, but... Mr. Stevens and Mr. Montgomery seem to be buddying up over there, and I don't wish to give the same appearance of you and I, but I feel you may be one of the more reliable uh, of the three. What do you th what, what do you suppose he's talking about? What do you think there? What do you think he's on about? I'm going to be honest with you, Sheriff. I ignore half the words that come out of that boy's mouth. Yeah, we should run this. We should get away from that. Oh, the shadow scared me. I spent an entire night watch with him. He's probably harmless. Honestly, he's more of a threat unto himself, but... Why, you, uh... You don't trust him? That's not necessarily what I'm getting at, but I do feel that he's more of a anybody else out here. I just, I have my concern. I want to know that if we come across uh, uh, the young Miss Strong, somebody's going to stick around and have my back. Because if... I think they that's what I'm here for. Make sure you all will come back in one piece. Speaking of which, I really do think we should get that gun from the boy. Hey, I don't wish to make him become erratic. In attempting to take it from him it may set him off. He says there's a certain having had gun we could unload it and say hey maybe we switch and give you a bigger gun something a little higher caliber and easier to use what do you think about that I don't know about you but I'm mighty attached to my rifle here now out of character real quick didn't we, we found an extra rifle back here 
You did. You right. found a fully loaded hunting rifle. Right. And who did? Am I still carrying it? Is the deputy still carrying that, or did mm. I hand it off? I don't remember. Yeah, I, I, I don't it. know the details of who took that. Right. I don't, I don't think, think I put it in. Did we leave it? But well, we know it's there, yeah. so we can. We'll just we want to say that we just left it there. <laughs> Go or snatch it up. Yeah, let's say you just snatched it up. It's. I mean, it's, it's between one. Okay. Of, it's not with me for sure. It's not with Samuel for sure. Right. I th think that I let you take the colt, or I gave one of you to the colt. I gave I either I Samuel or Henry the colt. Mm -hmm. So and that, so I think we actually did. We took the hat and left the rifle back there. I would say. So the deputy will point to go over there and grab the rifle, and he will unload it, and then make his way back out to the middle of the camp. <laughs> After having done their search, of course. <laughs> well, is everybody rounded? Uh, we think we need to get so that we can move on. Yes, yes, indeed. We uh, we we found some 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 provisions for yes. the road, and I think I think we should be good for the next. Uh, uh, a day or two, I hope. Uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, we, we are okay. Yeah. Hopefully, it won't be a day or two. Yeah, I hope too. <clears throat> um, three, if you will. Hmm? Montgomery, Mr. Montgomery. Uh, yes, 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 deputy. What, what, what can I do? Do for you? Do for you? Um. That hunting rifle I picked up, would you be interested in carrying that? It's a little bit bigger, a little easier to use. Packs a little more punch. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, if you, if, if you, if you think that is, that is good for the group deputy, then, then I can take that gun. I, I already have a rifle. Um, it seems sturdy you enough. Do? Well, I've looked this one over, and I know this is a reliable weapon. I haven't looked that one over, and neither has Mr. Pinnery. Ah, ah, I see. Uh, oh, then yes, indeed. Uh, sure, he, he, he kind of, you know, with one hand he's giving you one gun, and he kind of has his other hand out, out, outstretched for the other gun. And you can clearly see that mm -hmm. it's, it's mainly like he doesn't want to let go of a gun, so... Um, mm -hmm. So as soon as you put one gun in one hand, he's going to let go of the other, almost. It's like... <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, so the deputy will... Yep, he, 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 he hands it over without... He shows no real concern or anything. He just means to hand it over. Yep, and as soon as you give the gun, he, he grabs it tightly and let's go of the gun that you're asking for quickly like you know it's like kind of holding on to railing for life mm -hmm. the deputy takes the other gun from you the other rifle from you and just gives you a little nod and then slings it over his shoulder all right everybody are we ready to move out you're right deputy this this gun does have a better feel to it ah yes i feel like a hunter now mm, yes I don't begin ahead of yourself, no, no, but no. yeah, we should head out. Indeed. So, so all of this interaction took approximately, you know, 15, 20 minutes, uh, not that long. Uh, it didn't take long to go through cabin and find the food and uh, exchange weapons and, and have your discussions walking around the camp. Uh, which path did you folks decide to take? Trail from the, the hat and the gun. Yeah, okay. the drag marks, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, so go ahead and make another uh, track test. Uh, any anyone can make it, but I'm assuming all this is going to be the one. Yeah. Wow! So all this 
<laughs> he very easily sees. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's obvious um, where someone was drug through, um, drug through the the underbrush. Um, and it, it, it looks like, you know, maybe it, it was there for just a moment, but then it starts to thin out just a little bit and turn to what he would consider, quote unquote, normal tracks. Uh, not so much dragging, but there is broken branches. Uh, there's, you know, disturbed undergrowth. He's, he's looking around, he's following it, and it's simple for him to follow, but to anyone else looking, uh, they wouldn't be able to even even think about or be, be able to you know qualify what it is what they that they were looking at um but he is following it with a seasoned eye and is having no issues and no problems whatsoever now he follows this for you know approximately uh you know 15 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes and every every 10 minutes 15 minutes he stops to look at the ground and he's, you know, looking up ahead of him. You all stop behind him, following his lead, and uh, he he kind of gets level with the with the tall grass, and he looks at it, um, he sees what's broken and what's leaning what way, and then he says, "Let's let's continue," and you again follow him, knowing that uh, you can't go wrong uh, following his lead. So. As Aldous leads you on this on this uh, track and this this trail um, that only he can see, uh, it's about an hour, not that long, about an hour before you come into a clearing. And off in the distance of that clearing, you see a cabin. It's an old cabin. It's run down. It's, you know, it, it is falling apart. But it's a cabin out here in the middle of nowhere. Now, once you walk up, you smell the iron smell of blood. You smell the dead undergrowth decaying. You you see birds disturbed and flying off in the distance. It doesn't feel right to you, but you walk upon it and here it is. Uh, does this uh, look like from my dream? Um, no, actually. Um, now, I know you have had a dream about a cabin, but this doesn't look or feel like like the nightmare or the dream you had. This is something else. This is something different. It's, you know, just an old cabin in a clearing. The door is closed. There's no sign of any movement. Um, but as you enter the clearing, like I said, you can, you can smell death. Uh, go ahead and make a, a spot hidden roll uh, with, with a uh, one bonus die. All, everyone, everyone can do this. Oh, sure. No, you said that. Yeah, sorry. Let's go. Let's give me a hard time. With a bonus? Yeah. Bonus is for everyone or just for Demi? Ooh, I got a critical! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah what? <laughs> everyone? Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, fail. It's fine. Oof. This, this, yeah, this. Good thing, good thing. Yes. <laughs> yeah, good yes. thing my plus one and plus two gave me critical, because otherwise I sucked. So, so um. Oh, I did it pretty good, actually. Samuel, he, he's kind of, he's holding his gun, like I said. He's 
got it clenched and he's holding it close to him. He's holding it tight, uh, not letting it, you know, get away from him at all. And he's standing there and he's just kind of uh, looking at the cabin. Um, but the other three of you, as you start kind of wandering around uh, the cabin, you realize that that smell, oh my God, that smell. It's, it's a person. It's a person basically pinned to a tree. They are stuck to the tree with a long spike through them. Okay. And they're hanging there, their blood dripping, drip, 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 hitting the mud and the dirt below them. The blood sitting in the sun, making the whole area stink. Buzz, flies buzzing around. And they're obviously dead. The three of you who found it make one D four or make a I'm sorry, make a sanity check. I've seen worse. Oh, Mr. Pennery. So in all your Hen- in these woods. Henry, roll 1d4 sanity loss. Oh, not bad. So I'll let you guys kind of role play that a little bit, uh, coming around the corner and seeing that. Whereas Zypher's character, or I'm sorry, uh, whereas Samuel, um, who just kind of stood there when you guys came upon the cabin and didn't do the same amount of exploring that you guys did. So he he, he didn't see uh, the body uh, pinned to the tree around the backside of the cabin. The deputy will... He sees this body and he kind of puts his <clears throat> closed hand up to his mouth as if to, you know, <clears throat> like he's clearing his throat. Mr. Pennery, in all your years, have you ever seen anything like this? I can't say it's this exactly, but no, I haven't. This is gruesome. When um, Henry spots the body, he'll uh, kind of look at it with big eyes and <coughs> or he'll kind of spin around and kind of put his hands on his knees, almost like bending over and heaving. Samuel, turn around. Around. And obviously the deputy noticed this. <laughs> uh, the the clear and physical uh, will that rather that uh, Henry is f- fairly distraught, and he just says, "Yeah, just Mr. Stevens, would you around to the front side of the cabin and just kind of keep an eye out, please?" Uh, I'm I'm going. I'm going. And then uh, Henry happily kind of scoots off away from the body. You think they've ever seen a dead body before? Well, this is, uh, I think, a little bit different. Spike through it. Let's uh, let's get a closer look. <clears throat> Okay, yeah, let's uh, let's see if there's any anything around the tree or any to struggle or anything like that. Cause maybe this man was, you said man. Yes, right? uh, man. Maybe this maybe this man was dead before he was. If not, so prayers. as you you walk up to get a closer look of the the body that's pinned to the tree, you see that there's what looks like almost a long hollow um, like pin or spike uh, sticking through his chest sticking him to the tree 
Um, you're not sure exactly what it is, but um, he's he's dangling there, lifeless. Uh, he's you know he's got a beard. He's he's wearing uh, you know some uh, denim pants and uh, you know a flannel shirt, and his his blood is pooled below him. Um, but that's pretty much all there is i mean you you search him and you don't really find anything on him there's no identification uh there's there's uh no personal belongings um from all you can tell uh really is there is a dead body pinned to the tree Been down and just with kind of touch the blood just to see how warm it is. So you you kind of bend down. You you put one knee down to the ground and uh, lower yourself. Uh, the sun gets in your eyes just a little bit, so you turn your face to shield yourself. You put your hand down into the moist earth and touch the ground, and the blood that is pulled there while somewhat moist just because it's early morning it seems like it isn't wet uh, this this blood isn't fresh um, it, it's been here for at least uh, a day and the deputy will turn to Aldous and Mr. Penry this is this has been setting out here for at least overnight, I'd wager. The ground dried and hardened, if only slightly. And the body's gone a bit cold. And appears as though we're set in. Right, well, we didn't find anything here that's useful. You think we should check inside? Let me ask you, Mr. Penry, have you ever come in your experience with these woods? I'm sorry, come across what? This cabin and all of your years in these woods. I'm guessing no, right? Uh, no, you, uh, Aldous is not familiar with this cabin. Uh, he he thinks back. He's he's taken a lot of hunters to a lot of different cabins, um, a lot of different camping areas, uh, but this is a little uh, a little off the beaten path and a little too far into deep wood uh, for it to for it to be something that he's completely familiar with. I say. Can't hurt to take a quick look inside. <clears throat> so they all right. to the front of the cabin. So you guys kind of uh, start walking towards the front of the cabin. Like I said, the the door is closed. There's no signs of activity going on. Uh, everyone, go ahead and make a spot hidden check. I see nothing. <laughs> you have a good spot hidden too. <laughs> so the the deputy and Aldous, with their experience with with hunting, with rifles, with firearms, with shooting, um, you you do notice the cabin is kind of riddled with bullet holes as you get closer you see what looks like, and you're sure, is bullet holes. Um, would we be able to identify what kind, do you think? Or at least like, a, like about a size and shape and whether or not it's scattered, or like shotgun, you know? Um, 
some of it looks scat it's it's they're like it's almost as if there are different kinds some of it looks scattered some of it looks to come from maybe a a rifle type uh caliber um but you do see holes in the front of the cabin all right i'm gonna start whispering we should take it nice and quiet looks like someone got in a little scrimmage here we don't know who came in on top sure as hell wasn't that guy i'm gonna point to the body i agree this is very odd and the deputy will turn to Henry and Samuel. You two. Hmm. Would you mind keeping watch all front? No. Don't mind at all. E e e yes, deputy. Uh, yes. Henry is still trying not to vomit. E yes. Uh, yes. I'm uh, keeping an eye on the on the woods, deputy. As you as you as you say. Yes. Thank you. Aldous, and the deputy will turn to Aldous and. Not toward the door. Is the door? Is there a door there? Is it still? You know, yeah. Or is it there's there's a door there and it's closed. Right, okay. I want to creep my way over there. Well, as you both start kind of creeping up, and Henry and Samuel are standing back, the two of you that are kind of creeping forward and getting close to the cabin, make another spot hidden check, please. So again, once again, because of your your history and your skill with firearms, you walk up and the first thing that both of you notice is the bullet holes in the cabin. The splinters and the shards from the wood are facing outward. What do you make of this? I want to. I want to put my ear to the door and try listening in on something. So just a listen roll, yeah. Yep. So as Aldous puts his ear to the door, it touches the cold hardwood. And he's listening. He closes his eyes to help his hearing even more. And he stands there trying to block out all ambient sound. Birds, animals, the deputy's breathing, everything. And as he's there, he holds his breath and listens. And inside, he hears footsteps. All right, so my eyes shoot open and I look at the deputy. Uh, sort of like, you can see shock in my face and I look at him and I, uh, I sort of motion, uh, motion my hand towards the door, you know, my thumb. And I make a little, uh, little walking man with my two fingers. And the deputy seeing Aldous do this, he just nods understandingly. And the deputy will turn with point it on um, point it rather to the door and then just gives a head nod. Alright, real quick, with that listen roll, am I able to tell whether or not it's like upstairs or are there upstairs or or is it just like they're they're it it sounds like it's just basically on the other side of the door all right so uh now the my boy's got the the word i'm gonna get ready to like sort of kick down this door maybe i don't even know if it's unlocked but i want to bash through it which would be 
Um, you you want to bum rush in? Is that what you're saying? It's sort of like a breach it, you know? I want to kick it. You want yeah. to kick it in. Do I don't want to charge in there, but... Yeah, I mean, that would probably be just be a uh, um, straight-up strength test. <laughs> if they were... Well, whoever it was, if it, if it wasn't sure if anybody was here, they are not. Hopefully it's already unlocked. Hey. <laughs> My old brittle bones. So the deputy so, sees, yeah. all, <laughs> sees all this wind up with his foot and kick, and it just comes to a thudding stop on the door. And the deputy's uh, wide, and he's just not really disappointed, but what the hell was that kind of look? And after you kick the door like that, and it doesn't go anywhere... Yeah, you just kind of pushes you back and makes you stumble just a little bit, uh, even to the point of almost hurting your knee. Um, you you kind of catch yourself, you know, falling backwards just a little bit, uh, but you don't actually fall. And as you do that, all of a sudden, bam! There's a shotgun blast coming out the door, and you hear someone inside yelling and screaming, "Get away!" Get away! You leave me alone! Get away! Get down, Sam! Is it a man? And it's a man's voice, and it's just screaming and yelling to get away. Get away. Get away. And then he says, you give her back or get the hell away. Give her back or get away. And he's just yelling from the inside. And then there's another BAM! Shotgun blast that comes through the door. What's going on up there? And at that same time, um, Sam was like, Henry, Henry, I see something in the in the forest, Henry. Do you see that out there? What? No. What are you talking about? I, I see something somewhere. I, I just saw some movement. I, I think we should be more focused on what's going on behind us. Uh, Deputy, I think so. I think someone's coming at us from the forest. I think someone's coming at us from the cabin. And the deputy's just making a gesture like across his neck, like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to call attention to his exact location here by the door. Or since he's right next as he yeah. was going to be shot. How close were we to getting hit by any of that? I'm What's sure that? you you almost got hit because you were trying to kick the door in and the blast came back through the door. Um, so if it wasn't for the fact that you didn't kick the door in, you kind of stumbled back and caught yourself off to the side just a little bit, uh, you would have been shot by the shotgun blast. Good thing for that bum knee. Uh, maybe it's double barrel. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> uh, what do we do? Let's see. So the the deputy looks at Aldous and just kind of makes his hand, like, like a hand puppet, you know, like talking, and then just points at the door. And as you guys are trying to communicate, you hear just someone inside just screaming and yelling, Give her back or leave! Give her back or leave! Give her back or leave! Uh, I'm, I'm gonna chime in now. I'm gonna sort of creep back a little bit further while I yell out. I want to be like on the opposite side of the deputy just in case, you know? I don't want to be caught in the crossfire if he shoots. Uh, now listen here, boy. I need you to calm down and lower your <clears> weapon. <throat> and a window blasts out. It shatters and glass goes flying everywhere. Part of the glass hits you, but doesn't cause any damage. Get away from the house. You can't hit the broadside of a barn, although I think we should do something. Let's back up. Oh, 
so the deputy seeing that happen motions to Aldous this makes like a like an overhand grenade motion um I don't have any grenades man <laughs> And he just keeps making that motion, like, and then points to the house, like, kind of upward to the roof. Oh no, computer, don't, don't restart on me. Uh, uh, as they're doing that, uh, head returns to Sam. What, what do you see in the woods? I, I, I. I, something, something's. I, I think I saw some, something move in the woods, just, just when, just when the shots came out. Nobody believes me. I, I'm sure I saw something. It's okay. There might be something, but just, just keep your eyes peeled. We're on a clearing, so we'll be able to see it coming. Okay. You can go help them if you want. I can I can keep an eye on the woods. I am not going anywhere near that house. I am not <laughs> looking to get shot. I am not suicidal. So you guys continue to hear just e basically yelling and screaming coming from inside. This person keep this this man keeps yelling about uh, returning the girl, returning the girl, um, or, or or leave me alone. You know he's. It, you can hear cracks in the voice where his his voice is becoming hoarse from just the amount of yelling and screaming he's doing at the top of his lungs. It feels like it's a scratchy type of yell. You know it's got to be hurting his throat. <clears throat> is there like a window anywhere nearby? Yeah. Other than the one that shattered like right Yeah, but well, there's a window that just shattered. There's 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 basically a, a wind. There's well from from your cursory glance when you first walked up. There's a window at the front and there's a window by the front door. The window by the front door is the one that was just shattered. And then there is a window in the front. Exactly, right there. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> seeing these hand motions from the deputy, I'm gonna shake my head in the negative. Then I'm gonna motion my head towards the window and then I'm gonna point at my gun. I'm gonna motion my head towards the other window or just in that general direction. Trying to do this nonverbal communication. So the screaming and the yelling doesn't stop on the inside. I'm gonna look at him, see if he understands what I'm putting out there. I'm sorry, say that again. So I'm gonna motion towards the broken window above me, right? And I'm gonna motion towards you and then the other window, and then I'm gonna point out our guns. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking I understand that I'm gonna go to this window, oh, and you're gonna go to that window. <laughs> And then I'm going to look for a nod of approval, we'll see if he gets it. And the deputy shakes his head in, in understanding once. And then, do, we need, do I need to make like a stealth roll to get over there? Or can I just move freely? I mean, I don't know that you want to walk straight across that window. Um, well, exactly. So... I, don't want to, I don't even want to walk straight across this doorway. <laughs> Okay. So it's clearly unhinged. If, if you want to try and move silently, yes, you need to make a stealth roll. Okay. Did I mention that I'm putting all three of my stats into stealth? <laughs> God damn it. Okay. Now, just remember, you. This is something that no one has done. Uh, it might not be worth it in this case, uh, but you can. Um, uh, I, 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 I wish I could remember the term now. You can. You can re-roll a failed roll um, by trying to put more effort into it, essentially. Um, so whereas you took a step and the, you know, the, the wood creaked underneath you, you quickly took your foot off 
and took a slower step around. You basically justify it that way from an RP perspective. Um, but you can push the roll is what it's called. You can try and re-roll that, but if you do that, my job is to let you know what the downside would be if you failed your second roll. If you do that, um, he would probably hear you out there and take a shot right in your direction. Right. And, and I'm honestly not all too interested in re-rolling it. Um, I mean, <laughs> that's unfortunate. Yeah, because my skill is not particularly good. So, Yeah. So you go to take a step forward and immediately the first board you step on gives it and bam there's a shot that comes out you fortunately didn't follow through with your step and didn't walk into the blast but you're still pinned down right where you're at and so the deputy's jaw just drops and he looks like he may have just shat himself as obviously that was much closer than he would he would like and so he just kind of looks at Aldous and he's just like shakes his head no <laughs> oh, we should bum rush him I want to hearing the shot and seeing that I, I want to try quickly you know am I close to one now that's one that was above me right like right there yeah yeah you're I mean you're near the other window up front yeah, so once I hear the shot, I want to sort of quickly jump up and try to see if I can aim my sights on the guy. Um, make a... I mean, you, you jump you jump up, and as you jump up, uh, you, you when you see it, when you hear the shot, you jump up, and you see, you actually see a man standing there with a smoking rifle, you know, smoke coming out of the, of the uh, muzzle, the barrel, in a thin wisp kind of floating up into the air as he's quickly reloading two more shots into his rifle. And then he closes it and click, click. And he's standing there and he starts yelling again. So I just watch him reload and all that? You, you jump up and you basically, what you see is you see him standing there reloading. Yeah, I want to so, try to pop a shot on this guy. He's firing at us. Okay. Um, because you're not completely level, you would, you would actually have to jump up and fire. Um, so I'm going to give you a... Uh, jumping up and firing. I'm going to give you... Is there no way like reach my hands up and sort of like blind fire in that general direction or? Uh, you can do that, but even in that, it's going to be you know you're going to have uh, negative dice. Uh, yeah, no, that's blind, fine. For blind firing. Way better than jumping up. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> Is it though? Uh, nuke him this shit. So you may, you know, put your hand up and blind fire into the window. Um, I'm going to give you, since you laid eyes on him already, it's a small cabin, and you have a general idea of where he is, I'm going to give you one negative die to do that. Cool. And do I have to declare I'm using luck beforehand, or...? No, no, no. You can use luck afterwards. So, you go to the negative one there, and you passed... So you reach your hand up over <laughs> the window seal and just through pure memory of what you saw and what you were looking at as you jumped up, you start firing in that general direction. Pop, 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 pop. And you fire off three, four, five rounds in that general direction, hoping something hits. And then all of a sudden you hear a scream inside. There's a scream and then there's a, a, a thump, thump, thump. There's a thud as something heavy hits the ground.
So, <clears throat> hearing... I'm, sh I'm sure that the deputy could hear that and hear the thudding. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Both of you. Okay, and, and obviously the, the screaming and everything. So hearing that, he turns and goes to quickly enter the doors so as to subdue this guy or possibly to begin medical training <laughs> or try to use some kind of medical first aid something. Um, so are you telling me that you're just opening the door and walking in? In a, with haste. <laughs> okay. Uh, make a luck test. I don't, uh, yes. Okay. So you walk in, and as soon as you walk in, there's the barrel of a shotgun facing you. It's turned on you. He's lying on the floor with blood surrounding him. And as soon as he sees you, the shotgun is pulled down and it's aimed right at you, but you're in fast enough to where you're able to kick it away from him. Okay, so the deputy kicks the rifle out of, or the shotgun, just kind of bats his hand down. Yeah, I'm gonna call out to the other group. Hey, let's get in there. And sort of loop around, see if I can uh, reunite oh. with the deputy. Okay. Uh, I, 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 will, I will stay out here and keep an eye, eye on the wood. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Y y you, you go in, Henry, and uh, see if they need help. Keep an eye out. Okay. Okay. And uh, Henry will uh, carefully walk up to the house. Gun in hand. So when you all walk in, you see um, a man standing there, and he has some linen trousers on. He has uh, what looks like a, a cotton knit T-shirt. Part of the cotton knit T-shirt has two holes in the side of it on the right-hand side, where there's bullet holes and blood kind of pouring out. You can see he's been shot twice from the right. He's lying on the ground and there's a shotgun approximately two feet away from him. So the deputy shouts out, grab that shotgun and then quickly turns to the man and says, sir, sir, I'm going to need you to calm down. You've just been shot. Is there some first aid? I have first aid. I also have first aid. Yep. Um, whoever wants to make a first aid check can. I'll I'll, I'll, allow, I'll allow because of uh, the group two people to make a first aid check. Yeah, I got Faye. Otherwise, it's just too, too many people well, you know, like surrounding him. It would be two out of three of us, correct? So, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Was outside. Oh, that. Yep. There you go. And well, all this was going to get the shotgun, so I guess logically, be me to fail. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Stab him. Stick your fingers in a bullet oh, hole. Oh, oh yeah. I just, I just forgot. We didn't bring any band-aids. Sorry. <laughs> so he's lying there, bleeding, and his eyes are wide, and his head is halfway cocked up off of the ground, off the floor. And he is laughing and crying at the same time. <laughs> Return her. <laughs> Return her. And tears are just coming down his face. Just real thick tears pouring down his face, leaving little trails of dirt across his face where you can tell he hasn't he hasn't washed it in days. And he's laughing, and he's laughing, and he's crying, and he's screaming, and he's saying, return her, or get out, return her, or get out, return her, or get out. Who is she? Return her, or get out. Calm down, man. Man by the shoulders, just to focus him. Return who? Return. 
go ahead and you guys can make uh, psychology tests. Oh, oh shit. What, in the two of them, or? Uh... A- anyone who's in there trying to get information from him can make psychology tests. It's crazy. <laughs> and he just continues crying <laughs> and laughing and screaming uh, and crying and laughing and screaming. Hey, we we have her outside. Calm down. We, She's we outside. The guy. <laughs> it's the blood loss. He's going in the shock. Maybe. But she was he was saying that before too. And the blood underneath him just gets thicker uh, and thicker. God damn, uh, what are you two doing over there? Here, take this gun, and I shove it at Henry. I can't heal him with a gun. No. Oh, I want to also attempt to medicine. <laughs> a first, a first aid. I'm a, I'm are, you, are you saying ours wasn't ours wasn't adequate? <laughs> You're saying the knife doesn't heal. Am I allowed to or not? Yeah, absolutely. Anyone who anyone can make any kind of test they'd like. Show you how it's done. Oh <laughs> shit. <laughs> and so all this he, he hands his gun off and he pushes you out of the way and he quickly kneels ah. down his you know one of his knees dipping into a, you know hit the blood that's kind of like slowly spreading across the dirty wooden floor and as he puts his knee down and he puts pressure on the wounds that he himself created he rips sleeves off of shirts off of his shirt he pulls out uh you know dirty cloth from his bag he he pulls out cloth and material cotton from wherever he can and he starts plugging up starts bandaging wounds and slowly but surely the bleeding slows down the pool underneath him isn't spreading out as fast, as quickly, as thickly as it was before. And he's sitting there, lying in his own blood. And he's just laughing and crying, and laughing and crying. What do you want? What do you want? Uh, we have the girl, she's outside. You, you have, you have the girl? No, yes. no. Hold you have on. the girl? Just calm down. She said she, she said she has the girl. She said she has the girl. Or I'm sorry, he said <laughs> <laughs> He said he has the girl. And he becomes excited and manic <laughs> at the Show. thought of the girl coming coming back into the cabin. What do you want with the girl? First of all, bring her back. Bring her back. Why? Oh, bring bring the girl back. Tell us why. Then we'll bring her back. And he's just crying and yelling for the girl and screaming. You guys, <sighs> can, you guys can go ahead. It sounds like you're trying to convince him. Let's intimidate the fuck out of him. Oh, so, okay. So you can either make persuade, charm, or intimidate, but at an extreme test. Okay. So we'd have to roll white for that? No, 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 no. no. You you can roll your green. Okay. I'm going to lower my voice. Where is she? Give us so the answer. It's, so extre- no, extreme is the the third number over. So Henry, for Henry, it's thirteen. You didn't you did not roll a thirteen. Oh. Uh, oh, for Sam, for Aldous, it's a nine. You did not roll a nine. And for persuade, it is a thirteen. You did not roll a thirteen. So this man sits here, continuing to just cry and cry. And yell and scream. Yeah, the the deputy should have to come in here. 
Get in here! Uh, oh. Uh, uh, okay, okay, de deputy. Uh, uh, can somebody please come and wash the woods while I'm in there, please? Short. And uh, Henry will get up with a shotgun and leave. <laughs> Henry, Henry, this. Just, just look in, in, in this area, Henry. I think I saw something. Okay. All right, now go, go inside. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, yes, deputy. Uh, you, you. And oh. So Samuel walks into the cabin, and as he walks into the cabin, he catches eyes with Henry on his way out, and Henry looks at him assuringly. Samuel looks afraid, and as he walks past him and into the cabin. He sees Aldous, and he sees the deputy both kneeling on the ground. And then they both look up at him as he walks into the door and catches their eyes. And as he looks down, he sees a man crying and laughing in a pool of blood on the ground. Samuel, make a 1d6 sanity test. <laughs> Bad idea. <laughs> so Samuel, you walk in. So that's you. You lose five sanity. So you walk oh. in, and you see them both kneeling down, knees in blood, a dead man lying on the ground, crying and laughing. How do you respond? What, what is this deputy? Did, did you just kill this man? Why are we out here killing killing people like this? What is what is happening? Why do you call me and uh, I don't I don't want any part of this. I, I don't want any. The deputy stands up and kind of clasps him on the shoulder and says, "This man was shooting at us and he's been shot in return. We're not trying to kill him." Mr. Pennery is is performing first aid on him. We're trying to get him to calm down. I need you to help me calm him down. Uh, 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 okay. Please. Uh, um, I am not calm I, myself, deputy. But okay. <clears throat> one. One. One st one spot uh, out of character. I see an intimidate roll and I see a persuade roll. Did you make an actual sanity roll, Samuel? You said one d six sanity. I rolled a five. Yeah, you said fuck it, lose sanity. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, oh yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, make a sanity check. Uh, okay. Hey, there you oh, go. You're oh, fine. Okay. oh, wait, wait, wait. Never mind. <laughs> uh, wait, wait, never mind. But, oh, wait, okay. <laughs> okay, it goes back to forty two. Um, <clears throat> so then I then kind of retcon that. <clears throat> Deputy, okay, who's this man? Why is he? Why is he shot? What's happening here? This is, this is the man that was shooting out of the cabin at us, and and he was screaming. He's he's acting in very, he's acting very peculiar. He just keeps shouting, and he says, "Bring her back! Bring her back!" Now he's been shot. Mr. Pinnery is is, is administered uh, ah, administered first aid on him, but I need you to help me calm him down. Talk to him, please. Okay. Uh, yeah, I need to calm myself down first for this, but yeah. Ah, uh, okay. It's okay. Mm. Do we know this gentleman's name? No, I guess. No, he he won't say anything other than bring her back, bring her back. Or leave. Okay. Um. So Samuel kind of uh, gently goes to the opposite side of where Pinnery is and administering first aid, and he gets to one knee and he says, uh, "Sir, uh, we have we have been through a lot trying to find the girl. Uh, I can only imagine." what you're going through right now because I feel I might be going through something similar uh, but but these wise gentlemen have convinced me to 
to see that if we work together we we might just come out of this alive uh please please calm down and and help us understand uh what happened here who are you talking about so it it sounds like your your um um one minute let me see Well, it sounds like you're trying to make a, either a persuade or charm test. Yeah. Romance him. Yeah, it would be more like a persuade, kind of calm him down. Um, okay. So, due to the fact that he is, he's been lying there in his blood, he's been shot, he's wounded, but the fact that you, you, your group attempted to also at the same time not let him die um you can make your persuade test but it will be hard rather than extreme okay yes <laughs> so yes. as as you're standing there talking to him he he catches your eye and he he looks you right in the eye and he's listening to every word you're saying He's following every word you're saying. He he's looking at your lips, your mouth as you talk, and he just he can't stop listening to you. Your voice is soothing, and he starts <sighs> relaxing. Yes, sir. Calm, calm, calm yourself. We are here. And to he help. stops. He stops crying. And he stops screaming. Yes. And he looks at you, and then he he holds his hand out, and he he grabs your hand. And with his, his blood covered hand across your hand, smearing his own blood over you, he looks you in the eye, and he says, "The girl is gone. They took her." The girl is gone. I, I, I found, I found Dobbs. He was dead last night. Attacked in the night. I found him pinned to that tree. And I sat here in this, I sat here in this cabin. And they tried to come after me and I fired and I shot and I shot and I shot out of the cabin and I don't know what happened after that but they they took the girl and they killed Dobbs we only we only wanted some money we only wanted some money we thought Mr. Strong could afford it. We thought she, we thought he could afford it. I'm sorry. I'm Sir. sorry. And Sir. He breaks down, sobbing in tears. And then he grabs his head and he starts turning his head from side to side as he breaks down in tears. And he curls up into a ball on the ground with no care to the wounds in his side, lying in his blood. And he starts crying and crying in the fetal position, loudly and hysterically. To the deputy. Samuel, does it look well, like... Uh he can like he can say something to bring this person out or like he, he's kind of gone off the deep end maybe a psychology test to see if that you can make a psychology test absolutely so Samuel he looks at him and he says a couple of words to him he tries to get his attention <clears throat> He tells him, hey, it's 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 me. We were just talking. And to no avail, 
He has lost his mind. There is no coming back from whatever he's been through. He lies there, rolling side to side in the fetal position, holding his head and crying in his own blood, barely hanging on only because you patched him up. But it won't be long, probably before he's dead. So the, the deputy will reach down and attempt to help him up off the ground to see if he'll actually stand up on his own or if he's just... Um, and as you as you reach down and attempt to help him up, there is, there is it, it's complete rigidity. He is, again, just holding his head and rolling side to side, rocking back and forth in his own blood, rocking forth back and forth in his own blood uh, back and forth in his own blood so Samuel will look at the deputy while he's trying to help him up and he says deputy I I think this man is lost to us if we have any hope of finding that girl I, I can't believe I'm saying this uh, uh, we might have to leave him here to his fate and everyone that was in here and witnessed this make 1d3 sanity test or make a sanity test I'm sorry Okay. and if you fail it you lose 1d3 sanity <laughs> your sins weigh heavy on your mind <laughs> oh wow. wow. We're good. We're good. So as that happens and as as uh Samuel says that the deputy turns around and kinda he pinches the bridge of his nose and he's just kinda squinting. It, almost as if like a headache is but you can tell he he's just kind of t- and he's kind of deep in thought and he's he's just standing there you know pondering Samuel. and he just quite he quietly says Mr. Pennery what do you think the man was lost before we got here I think we should search the house And the deputy just just nods. So you you search the cabin, and you don't find much. You find some some meager provisions. You find some shotgun shells. Um, you obviously he has his shotgun, and you find some shells. Uh, you find some clothes, some toiletries, that kind of thing. You walk around, but then you also do find what looks like an outline, a plan, a discussion to kidnap, quote unquote, the girl. <clears throat> they talk about how the, quote unquote, the girl's father has money and how this will be easy, and how this sleepy little town won't see it coming, etc., etc., etc. And it goes on to talk about how we've got this, no problem. Okay, and who 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 comes across that? You, you, I mean, any any one of you. It does it doesn't matter really. I mean, if anyone wants it, they can have it. It's just it's just like secondhand notes and pass to one to each other um obviously one of the kidnappers is dead outside and one of them is now going crazy and dying on the inside of the cabin and the deputy just kind of looks the notes over and i'm sure yeah the deputy would have that because it's evidence mm-hmm 
and I'm assuming he has a pack, correct? Yeah, a, again, that goes along with, you know, basic provisions and clothing and that kind of thing. Yeah, so he, he, he just, he, he does as, as best as he can to uh, not really mess it up, but also he wants to not stuff it into his pack, but, but as nicely as he can. And he's just, like I said, he, he just, he, he doesn't, <laughs> I'm not sure how to put it. He, he not, not shaking, but he's just, you know, you can, it's, it's physically evident on, on his person now that he, this is a lot of this is really starting to weigh on him. And he just turns and says, well, I don't know that we can do for this man. There's no justice for him out here in these woods. And there's no justice for that man on that tree. What man but I don't know what, what we can do for him. What was that? Samuel is a little confused. What man on what tree are you talking about, deputy? His partner. The dead man, one outside. You didn't, you didn't see it? No, I, I was I, I was looking at the at the woods. Uh, uh, you guys went around and then and then Henry came back, quite shaken. But well, well, Samuel, I'd say it's best we don't even go back there. Oh, okay. As you say, deputy. Uh, yeah. Mm. One one dead body on its way is quite enough. Uh, but, uh, gentlemen, uh, I, I, I agree, my, 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 um, my behavior has not been up to par, but seeing what I've seen so far, I think, yes, I agree, we must try and save the girl, yes, uh, but, but I do ask a favor of you, uh, if I were to become like this man out in the hall, would you be so kind as to uh, end my misery? I, w I would, I would be much obliged. I, I, I uh, just ask that of you. Uh, Deputy will turn to Samuel and just put his hand on his shoulder, and he's kind of looking. At me. He looks straight into Samuel's eyes as he begins to lift his head back up. He says, "That won't happen." And we will... Then he turns to Aldous and out of character, real quick. A f flare or something? Oh, we had like a flare gun or something in the beginning. Uh, I don't believe anyone decided to take a flare gun that wasn't specified anyways and something as specific as that uh, I would I would have needed mm -hmm. to be specified and put in your sheet but it wasn't okay no that's fine I was just asking I I, I didn't remember if we had gotten anything or yeah, I think we just got generic like search party stuff I'm not sure if a yeah. flare would uh, camping maybe. equipment and uh, things of that nature but I, I I almost I almost think I remember something from the first uh, session go ahead and make a luck test now well, it's so lucky for you you do have a flare gun in your backpack or maybe we found it in the cabin either way you're lucky to have found one okay um So the deputy will turn to Aldous and he just says, Mr. Pinnery, I know that there will be men, uniformed men, searching these woods. Before. Perhaps the local police, perhaps federal agents, and I'm not, I can't be entirely sure it's this cabin. But do you think it would be worthwhile to shoot a flare or put a flare out 
or do you think that won't? It's the middle of the day. I doubt anyone even see it. No. I don't feel like hanging around here until the evening to put out a flare. How do you think... Is there any way you think we could put out anything that might attract uh, anyone to the cabin? I mean, um, if if you're asking about anything that might attract anyone to the cabin, your your only bet is the flare gun. I mean, either that or starting a fire. Yeah, yeah or or yeah, starting a forest fire in that area. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, let's burn I mean, the cabin down. No, there's there's no GPS. There's no satellites. There's no mm -hmm. there's there's none of that. So, right, which is why I was asking if we had a flare. I didn't know if that would be. You know, what would be the best way to to at least alert someone to this location or general area? Okay. And so that's, again, that's what he's trying to figure out if, if Aldous would have any ideas there outside of the flare gun. Outside, of the, outside of the flare gun, um, you don't have any other ideas. There's no landline Wait right a second. Here. I have... An idea. Uh, he turns to to Samuel and says, "Would you mind going out and gathering several sticks, logs, grass, dried up, uh, anything that's dry, iron, good, well." Okay, deputy. Uh, uh, as uh, as you say, uh, I'll, I'll go get that. Right away. Uh, okay. Samuel's very Thank confused you, as to why Samuel. we want that, but he doesn't question. He heads out. And then the deputy will turn to Aldous and he says, Do you have like a flint and stone type of thing? Anything that you might be able to start a fire with? And that would absolutely be critical uh, equipment for any kind of. Uh, tracker hunter so yes all this does have that okay Imagine. and now and now out of and maybe maybe this is a stretch but i'm just assuming that they must have a fireplace because it has a smokestack yeah it's it, it's a cabin out in the woods there's there's a there's a fireplace perfect and so he he just looks at all this then and he says perfect i suggest that we start a large fire and just let it roll inside the fireplace and hopefully that smoke will draw anyone to this cabin that may be looking you think smoke from a cabin is going to cause some alarm I I'll way out in the middle of the woods while the search parties are running all over and the feds are running around the local police are running around and everybody's looking for Mr. Strong's daughter. I think that somebody's at least going to take notice to it. And as you two are kneeling there, having this discussion, the man on the ground, he looks, looks up at all this, and then he looks up at the deputy, and his eyes are wide, and his crying has slowed his laughing has stopped and he says we didn't mean no harm we didn't mean no harm i'm sorry and as he reaches out he grips the deputy's hand covered in blood and he squeezes it and says i'm i'm sorry officer um Sorry. The and he, his head turns to the side and he lets out a last breath. <sighs> and there's nothing, nothing left. The deputy is obviously a little bit taken aback as he was under the impression that this man was his mind was 
gone and then just comes in and has this moment of clarity <clears throat> and so the deputy will kneel down beside the man and just put his fingers on the side of his neck to try and check for a pulse and you don't you don't feel any pulse at all so he just exhales heavily in a, in a sigh let's get that fire started and let's leave this place at that point Samuel is back again with some you know dead twigs and branches anything that looks like kindling and some logs to as requested <clears throat> just put them over in the fireplace ah yeah okay deputy and he goes and puts the logs in the fireplace and sets it up for Aldous and the, the deputy just turns to all this and just says, just says Mr. Pennery and just nods and turns and walks out of the cabin door I'll get to work on that what's that at the bottom there doc oh nothing don't worry about that I'm a little worried now so anyway yeah so the deputy he walks out. Yeah, you said that you were working on that. Yeah. So you guys are working on building a fire. You're loading wood up into the fireplace. Uh, you're kind of huffing it in from the forest. Uh, branches here and branches there. You're kind of taking it in, walking past the dead body lying on the ground in the pool of blood. You put it in the fireplace. Once you have the fireplace full of wood, dried kindling, dead branches and trees, you take some kerosene from one of your lanterns, throw it on top, and then with flint and whatever else is necessary with flint <laughs> you you create a spark and that spark whoosh, lights up the whole fireplace and there's a thick thick smoke going out of the chimney and the deputy just kind of turns to everybody and says well gentlemen fire started and um, he just he'll suggest that we look around and the, the man that just died um, did he make any indication as to where this girl was taken off to no he, he didn't make any kind of indication whatsoever okay, he just said so they took her she's gone that kind of thing Okay. So the deputy will just indicate that maybe we should look around for, for any signs of a scuffle or drag lines or anything like that that might set us in the right direction. So you can all make a spot hidden or a tracking test? So, so Henry kind of looks around and he shrugs his shoulders. He's like, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. Um, but the rest of you, you look around and you're, you're, you're significantly convinced that there is no drag marks, there is no trail, there is nothing. Especially Aldous. Aldous knows. I mean, he, he, he's, he's been through this and he knows what's going on and. He's led you up to this point so far. Um, he knows that there is nothing beyond this cabin, and the only thing left is the only trail leading back to the artist's campsite. Yeah. 
the deputy will just turn to Aldous and says, Mr. Pennery, did you find anything? No, there don't be a seem <laughs> there don't seem to be any signs of her. And then the deputy will turn Samuel, Henry. Any I signs of anything? Nope. No deputy. I looked around but nothing nothing that's gonna help us. The deputy just kind of scratches his head for a moment and once again kind of pinches the bridge of his nose. Mr. Pennery, do you know which way's north? How dare you ask me such a dumb question? Of course I do. Well, you recommend we go north or follow the trail back out? Look, I can't tell you where we should go. There's no sign of the girl, this man, screaming about someone taking her or she's getting lost or... I sure as hell can't find her. And then out of character here. As far as we know, the light is still north, correct? Um, as far as you know, yes. But also, at the same time, Mr. Pinnery knows um, that this is thick, thick thick wood um just just going north basically stomping through the woods uh is going to be extremely difficult and hard so you can you can go north if you would like um but it's going to be e extremely difficult or you could head back and you could find either the tire tracks or you could head back even further and find the trail you were taking, or you could head off north through the thick woods. Mr. Pennery, your suggestion? Look, Deputy, you tell me where you want to go and I can get you there. I'm at a well, loss right now. I think we still need to go north, but you are the expert of these woods, and I, I'm i more than willing to follow and yield your advice. If we continue north, it's going to be a rough trek, take some time, mighty tiring. I don't know if the young one got him in him. I'm looking at him. I'm pointing over at Samuel. Samuel is like just clutching his... His, his rifle and just looking at the fire, looking deep into it. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you think what it's best to go back the other way, then most definitely let's Let's go back the other way. And we'll have to figure out a different route north. And he just kind of gestures to Aldous, you know, throws out a hand gesture as if lead the way. So have you guys decided to backtrack, or are you going to head north through the thick brush? I think we backtrack. We're going to backtrack. Yeah. Okay, so with all this guide, you start following the trail back, and again, masterfully, he follows the exact same trail back, uh, once again, stopping and kneeling, looking at the brush, looking the way it's bent, the way the the leaves are crushed, the way the grass is broken, and he uses that to kind of reverse the trail you guys took to get there. And he leads you back to the artist's camp. Now, you are at the artist's camp when you discover that 
it's not that much further of a walk before you get to to the uh, to the uh, tire tracks. So you press on and you continue. It's still bright daylight. The sun is hot and it's beaming down on you. And you're kind of pushing off with gnats and little flies buzzing around you. You wave them off. You walk one foot in front of the other, sometimes in mud, sometimes in grass, but always through the woods. And as you walk through the woods, you come across, finally, after several hours, the tire tracks where you ran into the survey team member in his truck. And it's heading north. From there, what do you folks decide to do? We're going north. Well, we already know where the kidnappers went. And we know we have to assume that the girl was taken north because we've come from the other way. It's the only real option. And we've only just come across the kidnappers. So I say we go north. Mr. Montgomery, what do you say? Uh, uh, I, 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 I do not know, Deputy, at this point. I, I think the only thing that no. we have not yet seen is is where is where the man in the truck and uh, now based on whatever has happened to us and what we have seen I strongly feel that that man was not all right maybe I used the wrong words to describe his uh, his speech patterns like I said he was mechanical almost like an empty vessel repeating words it felt like it had to be repeated uh, but but I do not know if um, if if what lies there because he said there was a survey team and if he was affected then I don't know if anybody else is and I, I've been thinking through a haze and I still can't uh, put two and two together as to whatever happened to the hunter and his son and the artists uh, so I really am not sure what we are going to find at the lake or how many people are going to be at the lake. Maybe there's no one at the lake. I'm just hoping they uh, all got afraid and kind of left the area, like that group that we stumbled upon. Uh, yes, and I know I may sound like a broken record, but now everyone has seen the, the horrors and yes, I use the word horrors not lightly, but I see it in your face, deputy, and Aldous, you might try to hide it, but I see it as well. And I know, Henry, something behind that house shook you up pretty good. Gentlemen, I ask you again, maybe we can come back with, with more people. I don't think we have time for that, unfortunately. Mr. Pennery? Well... I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to say here. Well, do you wish to continue north, or do you think we should head back to the town? Get more help. 
I mean, we still haven't really answered what happened to that man. We know he was struck up. But, uh, who exactly did that, right? Right. This might be we don't know who... gangsters. Well, we don't know who took the girl from the kidnappers. And as the deputy looks back over toward where the cabin was, he looks to the sky. Does was there smoke rolling high? So you you look back at, from the direction you came, and uh, you definitely do see billowing smoke up in the sky through the cracks of the trees. When you do finally see sky through the cracks of the trees, um, it's far and few between. But when you do finally get a glance. It's there. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> the deputy sort of looks to everyone and he just says, longer we take to find this girl, the less likely she is to be alive. I think we need to press on. No, I find her as soon as possible. I understand what you're saying, Deputy, but so far we've been running in circles and now the threat seems to be getting larger. You know what I'm saying? We need to solve this. Get the girl back. All I'm saying is that I don't want her to die out here. And as I said, the less time we waste in finding her, the better her chance of surviving this is. It sounds like you're trying to make a persuade test against Pinnery. Okay. Ooh, good one. So, as he explains the situation and he tells you that the likelihood of the girl dying increases with every single day the longer it takes that the facts bear true with federal studies and he throws out this study and that you know exam and and he lets you know that this girl is going to die if we don't take our time you listen to him and you you see the you hear the earnestness in his voice and you can't deny what he's saying. And you understand, well, damn, you've got to find the girl. Well, damn, we got to find that girl. <laughs> All right, Mr. Pinnery. Care to lead the way then? As usual. Let's get going. So, you guys follow the tracks and you are following the grooves and the trails, and these are the same tire tracks that you had been across before. Um, you, you had seen these previously, but then you follow them for a couple of hours it's still daylight the sun is still shining when it finally does shine through the thick of the trees with uneven ground and with lurching forward and backwards as as you know you you make your way you realize there is a choice to make Now, on one end, it looks like the trail continues on, the tire tracks, the well-worn ground obviously leading to the, the surveyor site continues on to the left. There's no question about it. But to the right, there is a less worn track you can kind of see where 
maybe a truck went once or twice. Maybe it was foot traffic. You don't know. It's less worn. There's more fo foliage covering the ground. But it's there. It's definitely there. So it's either to the left and continue north to the surveyor site or to the right to a less worn track that you haven't seen you don't know anything about but it might lead to something that is useful to you can we tell which tracks are more fresh I guess of course the left ones are the one leading to the surveyor site that truck that you just saw yesterday driving across it, its tracks are still fresh you can see the big indentation in the mud uh, the the leaves pushed down into the shape of the tread hmm. but the right so tempting ideas anyone suggestions I'm not sure for me a certain poem comes to mind by Robert Frost and it seems to want to it seems to be pushing me And I think the road to Virgin Wood and I, I took the one less traveled by. Deputy, <laughs> uh, it seems that ever since we have gotten on this search, we've taken the low rest traveled. While it has not brought us harm and maybe some questionable experiences, it has at least answered up some of our questions. Uh, a part of me wishes not to take this low dress travel, but I think it might be the smart thing to do at this point. Even the deputy just nods kind of solemnly at uh, Samuel. I agree. Well, Mr. Pennery. Let's get going. And once again, the deputy just nods. And so I'm gestures. looking at looking around at each other and, and coming to an agreement, whether it's verbal, nonverbal, uh, you you all have a tendency or you seem like you are getting to know each other's uh, nonverbal cues. You know, you can look at Samuel, you can look at, you can look at Henry. Um, Aldous can look at the deputy, all of you, as you come to this intersection, and kind of give each other a nod as you look to the right. You decide there's something going on there. There's something happening there. And we need to investigate. So you start walking to the right. You start heading off through the forest again, taking drinks of water changing shirts possibly because of sweat bugs flying around you branches hitting your face your feet are tired you probably have blisters this has been a long long three days and then you finally after a couple of hours come through you head through the forest, pushing your way, 
pushing, pushing, pushing. And then you come to a clearing. And it's in this clearing when you finally see, despite the time of day, the forest is so thick and the branches so intertwined that it feels dark. The branches are twisted and they're covering each other. The leaves are just falling. One of you, one of you has seen this before. One of you feels like you know what this place is. Should I, uh... No, we don't hear any <laughs> voices, or any... You walk up to the brush, to the mud, your footprints sticking to the ground, and you see a cabin. There are no voices, but you do see a cabin. Uh, can Samuel do a check on everyone? Like, uh... Like a psychology. Psychology. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. So Samuel himself, somewhat nervous and afraid, looks around and looks at the faces of his party, and everyone is just kind of at a standstill. Just standing there, looking. You can't discern any kind of emotion, any kind of thought from those faces. It's just everyone standing there in the clearing, staring at this cabin in the thick, thick wood. Now look, it's some strange figures and black cloths coming out start chanting at us to join them i don't want you to ask any questions i want you to start shooting okay have oh, you Roger. have you experienced with this cabin mr penry uh you can say it's been on my mind i'm on dreams maybe nothing good your dreams did you see this in your dreams Mr. Pendry. Now look, okay, it's probably just a coincidence, but like What's I said, it? if there's some weird dressing man, I'm not taking any more chances, all right? Mr. Pennery, please make a sanity check. I mean, goddamn, if we see even a single draped figure, I'm popping my shot off right then and there. You agree with me, don't you, deputy? Mr. Pennery. No chances. Please make a 1d3 sanity loss check. No questions asked. No second guessing. Do I have your word? The deputy sort of looks Aldous up and down as he's trying to understand where this, I guess, angst is coming from. And he just nods slowly, just says, yes. Well then, out of that settled, why don't we and go introduce ourselves. And and before everybody kind of takes off, the deputy just kind of holds out his hands and he just says, no, just hang on a second. Before we get any farther, you 
You have a very bad feeling about this, Mr. Penry. You could say that? Why? Do you think it would be wise to do before we start getting in a little uh, thicker? Wise to what? Do a weapons check. Um. Uh, <laughs> I mean, shouldn't you? I mean, re yeah. Realistically, you didn't reload yet. Uh, yeah, yeah, but there's some implications here. Remember what we we pulled earlier? Out I of know. Character? I know. But I. Mm -hmm. I should be good to go. I'm all covered. What about you? I just kind of do a quick one over of my gun and Mr. sling the Mr. Pinner, rifle off. You mean to say we kill someone in, in in cold blood? Did you not hear those shots? What shots? Uh, Henry just checks his gun. <laughs> Looks good. Now, out of character real quick, Henry also picked up the shotgun? Yes. So you have a shotgun and a rifle? Shotgun and the Colt. Oh yeah, and the Colt. Okay, okay. It's, I'm just trying to figure out what I have here. So then I have a shotgun and a rifle. I got a rifle with a scope. What does the what's the rifle's damage, by the way? Anybody have that on their stat sheet? It's two d six. I'm assuming it's two d six plus four. That's what I got. Why? Okay. Yeah. What's uh the pistol and shotgun? The have. Colt. The Colt is two d six. The shotgun is 4d6, is what I have on mine. So, uh, the question I asked Aldous... So, Mr. Mr. Pinnery, you, you are suggesting we kill in cold blood? At... Look, what I'm saying is... As long as no draped figures come walking out chanting at us, we won't have to do a damn thing. But if they do, I'm not taking any chances. And the deputy will... Again, kind of eye all this up and down. And he's just trying to gauge exactly what's going on here. Can you make like a psychology check? Sure. Roll that one. No, oh, geez. It actually wasn't that bad of a roll either. Um, yeah, so you're you're looking at um, Mr. Penery, Aldous, and he's sitting there talking about draped men and, and and robes, and you're you're not sure what he's going on about. Um, you're just kind of really confused, really, by by everything he's saying. Um, not not sure. Uh, of exactly what's going on. Okay, and then so the, the deputy will just kind of turn to Henry and Samuel and just say, "If nothing else, just aim low. Even just scaring them might be enough." The to deputy, turn them I away. said we shoot to kill. I thought we agreed upon that. Right, you and I can shoot to kill. We're trained. I mean, I'm assuming that we would be more trained. Uh, we're trained. These other two are not. He has a spread shot and a rifle. Or, and, and, a, and a Colt. He has a rifle. These two aren't as skilled. That's what I'm getting at. Pretty sure we know that. Anyway, are you expecting anybody to come out of this place? Well, I wouldn't be talking as nonsense if I wasn't somewhat dreading it. Hopefully your dream's just a dream then. 
Well, gentlemen, let's uh, let's push on. So you guys uh, go ahead, and you look, and you see the cabin up ahead of you. Despite it being daylight, you can see sunlight breaking through some of the trees. Just a ray of sun here and a ray of sun there. But for the most part, the branches choke out any light that you might be hoping on to brighten your way. The cabin itself is old, very old. It's dilapidated. The roof is falling off. There are shingles that are lying on the ground around it. Part of it just hangs to the side. It's just standing there in the middle of a thick wood. Mr. Aldous has no idea of where this cabin came from. It's not one he's ever used. But instead, it sits here in the dark, thick, thick wood, untouched for what looks like quite some time. The deputy just kind of says, uh, everyone keep your wits about you as we advance. Nobody get jittery. I don't need any bullets in anyone's backs or legs or arms or accidental deaths. So you see with with caution. Slowly make your way up to the cabin quietly with the crunch of dead leaves under your feet. You walk up to the front door. What do you do? Should we knock? Well, Mr. Binary, is this not part of your dream? What should happen next? Like I said, some cloaked figures should be coming out any second now, telling us to come with us, join us in his service, whatever the hell that means. But they, they come out to us. I, uh, in your dream, were you this close to this cab? Let me think about that for a second. That's a that's a no, Mr. Penry. That's a no. This is about, this is much closer. I remember being paralyzed and they, they approached me with purpose slowly. I couldn't move, but obviously <laughs> that was just a dream, right? So why don't we be hospitable and uh, knock on this door right here? Uh, well, I believe the last door we tried to knock on, somebody shot at us. How, how about we uh, uh, look through the win window if if we can and uh, uh, do what you do best, Mr. Penry. Uh, see if you can see something. Well, to be fair, Mr. Montgomery, he tried to kick the door and Let's peeking, not through do the, that. peeking through the windows doesn't exactly give us... Um, so, all right, Any let me advantage. ask, are, are you guys just talking to each other, or are you whispering? What are you doing? Yeah, I'm yelling. trying to keep my voice Loud. a little lower. Whispering for sure. Okay. But I don't... Um, peeking through the windows necessarily gives us any... Well, it could actually lead to more peril than anything. How about this, okay? Uh... Henry, you, you come with me, the two of you go hide in the woods, and... Actually, uh, Samuel, why don't you stay with me? You're, you're good of words. Uh... Oh, okay, okay. Don't go in the woods, then. Not, Not bad. too far, just... Keep an eye on us, you know? Something... Any cloaks come at you. Yeah, like I said, do not hesitate to shoot. All right. So as you send two off into the woods and the two at the door, they kind of slowly 
creep off again with leaves and brush crunching under their feet. The two at the door, you're standing there, you're looking at each other, and you're deciding who's going to be the first one in. Uh, maybe we should uh, knock Mr. Pindry, uh, announce our our presence, maybe? Uh, you're one of those uh, door-to-door salesman types, right? Why don't you uh, lay on the charm? Uh, yeah, I think I lost my charm after the first day of this ordeal, but sh- sure. Um, okay, uh, here goes. Come, 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 Samuel. Remember the, remember the, the salesman song. One sail, two sail, three sail, every day. Makes the world go round, round and round. Sails every day. Hello? And you rap at the door, knock, 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 and say hello in kind of a cracked almost scared voice. Is there anybody no, in there? No response. There's no sound coming from inside. No one responds to your to your questions. You're just standing there on the porch, shifting your weight, and as you shift your weight, it creaks. But nothing. Nothing from inside that you can hear. Uh, I wonder if the folks inside would like some transportation from this house to the city, the town of Bennington, more like it. Uh, I have many wares that, that, that might interest you. Hello? You continue to knock, but again, there's no response. Right, well, hey, you two, why don't you come back out here? I'm about to try my leg at this door again. Uh, uh, before you do, All before right. you do that, Mr. Pinry, may I, uh... And, uh, uh, Samuel tries to open the door, see if it's unlocked. And you reach for the handle and you grip what looks like a a brass doorknob and you slowly turn it and there's a little bit of stickiness to it but it finally gives as it jerks to the right as you turn your hand to the right and you discover the door is unlocked. Well, goddamn, that's a hell of a lot less fun. (laughs) <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, well, let's try once more, shall we, Mr. Pinry? Hello? The door is open. Uh, I'm still very interested to sell you some automotive vehicles. I think you are far enough from the town of Bennington that might, might actually come off handy. Used to you. You do have a lovely place here, if I may say so. Uh, anybody home? You walk in to the cabin and you slowly take some short, creaking steps. With each step, you know, the wood bends and kind of squeals out. Nails, old, old nails, you know, pushing down into old wood. And you look around the cabin, and there doesn't seem to be anything around sitting out that's obvious, but you do see some clothes on a hook. You see some old, old, desiccated animals hanging from hooks from the ceiling. You see some knives on a counter in the corner. Well, Mr. Pinnery, I I don't know what to make of this. Maybe this is a hunting lodge, you think? Well, uh, 
Definitely hasn't been registered. I haven't heard of it. Let's uh, get a better look. So as you walk around the cabin, are the others in there now? He, I mean, he called out for us. Yeah. So yeah. So 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 is everyone kind of walking in now? Yeah. I so, think so so the other two walk up, and you can hear their their weight on the creaking steps as they come walking up and into the cabin. And then as you all look around, again, like I said, you can see old clothes and uh, some knives in a corner, some old, old, what looks like shriveled and dried animals hanging from hooks on the ceiling. Um... Go ahead and make a make a uh, psychology test, everyone. Get my failure right out of the way. Jeez, how many times can we just keep going? Until uh, you uh, so find craftsmanship right there, De deputy. <laughs> uh, I believe we had found a knife. On the first dead body we had come across, do you still have it with you? I thought either Samuel or Aldous had that knife, didn't they? Oh, oh, maybe I do. Oh yes, I in, in, ah, oh yes, I do. Ah, can I um? see if this knife matches with any of the knives on the so you pull out the knife that was found near the dead body of the young man um, from the previous day or two days ago however long ago that was it seems like an eternity now and you look at it and you compare it actually to the knives that are sitting on the counter and they're exactly the same it's the same style of knife sitting there rusty and old a wooden handle a rusty blade deputy i think you might want to look at this is the and the deputy will make his way up this was what, what have you found here this was the knife we found near that young man on the on the first day in the bush and mm -hmm. look at it it matches with the other knives on the table ah uh, i do not think we should be in this house deputy i'm gonna go ahead and agree with you it kind of he kind of just does a quick glance around the house. As you glance around the house and everyone's kind of on edge, looking over their shoulders and looking back and forth, everyone make a spot hidden check. By one? By two? <laughs> Shit. Use your luck. Mm. There's nothing in here. Can, yeah. Can you use your luck for 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 those rolls? You you can use your luck, mm -hmm. or you can push the roll, and re-rolling. Yep. I'm Wait, but how would you would you overstrain your eyes or something? How do you push a spot hidden jack? You basically when you push a roll, it allows you essentially to just re-roll it, but you have to um, you have to explain what it is you're doing. Maybe your uh, your eyes are becoming more just to the dark, you know, area or you're you're focusing more on, on one area over another. You have to explain why it is you're allowing yourself to re-roll it. Um, that kind of thing. So So you said something about the clothes hanging on the um, on the wall. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's clothes hanging from pegs on the wall. So I'm gonna try and I'm gonna reroll my spot hidden to to kind of concentrate not on the entire room per se, but the clothes itself. Given the fact that the the knife 
kind of enlightened us about exactly or anyone can use luck i mean some of you are just a few points away from your from passing the test so luck might make sense in those instances too it's up to you guys i'm going to use the push for this let's see okay so you you push and you you focus on these clothes and as you're as you're sitting there staring at them and you're you're kind of focusing on what's going on um your eyes become a little dry and you you blink them over and over and over and you you know you you shake your head just a little bit um you spent so much time focusing on them and your eyes becoming somewhat dry your next spot hidden check will be at a negative one okay okay and then you said that we could use our luck no uh sorry you um, can so uh, i'm sorry i forgot how to do I apply that? Well, Just... well, basically, you rolled uh, a 76. Mm -hmm. So if you take one point of luck and remove it from your luck score, mm -hmm. you can add it to your spot hidden score. Okay. Or, or basically deduct it from your spot hidden score from 76 to bring it to right. 75, which is a pass. Right. Okay, so I'll go but, ahead and do but that, that. But that is a permanent plus one deduction from your luck score. Right. Yep. Oh, okay. That's fine. So, and and the reason I, I guess do I need to explain that? You don't have to explain it. I mean, you can. That's that's awesome if you can. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. The, the reason why I, I, I would would go ahead and do that is because he, he's the deputy. Sort of hit with a certain realization that this is a matching knife, and. Um, he kind of realize, uh, sees Samuel really eyeballing these, uh, whatever the, the cloth is or the clothes on the wall are. And he's just, it's almost like he's just hit with this realization, like, what are we doing? This, this is clearly, these people are probably the ones that are out killing people. And <laughs> we just brought back one of their knives and he just turns to everybody and he's, he's as to usher them out and he says we got to get out of here let's go all right well well you you passed your spot hidden check uh-huh and as you you know realize something more is going on here you look to the ground and you see almost a a, a light blue glow a haze coming from the floorboards underneath you Okay. This changes mm. my everything. So anyway, uh, is it yellow? I'll, I'll use some of that again. Um, yeah, is it yellow? <laughs> it's just blue. a haze. It, it's okay. a light blue, like a, a, a light blue color, almost like a light shining up through the floorboards, floorboards underneath you. So. Anyway, like I said, though, uh, he, he, the deputy sort of hit with this realization that, okay, here's this matching knife set. Samuel's over there looking at these claws, which could, you know, he's thinking in his head, I can't, my eyes aren't entirely focused or, or, or acclimated yet. And he just thinks those could potentially be these robes that Eldis was talking about. And he, he's kind of um, racking his notices this light haze from coming from the floor emanating and he just reaches out as he's kind of fixed on this, this like light and to, to whoever is closest to him just like I said he's just reaching a hand out as if to just paw at them to get their attention so I guess who would be the, the nearest to me let's say to my left to your left, uh, the, the you uh, you other three make a luck chest test. Uh, 
Okay, so the hard as success, Henry. Oh yeah. So Henry, okay. Henry is off to your side right there. As you reach your hand out, as after you notice this blue glowing light coming up through the floorboards, it's pale, but it's there, and you spot it. You're surprised the others haven't spotted it. You reach your hand out, kind of in shock, and you grab onto Henry's arm. Huh? What? Do you... Do you not see this light from the, on the floor? Uh, uh, Henry will look down. Does he see the light? And as Henry looks down, immediately the light becomes visible, or obvious. And you can see just just barely creaking, you know, creeping up through the small, thin cracks of the floorboard. There's a pale, pale blue light showing its way through. We should go down there, maybe. Are you asking me? Yes. I'm not sure what to do in the situation. As I am scared. So at this point, the deputy is just not frozen, but he just he just shakes his head a little bit and he says, Mr. Pennery, Mr. Montgomery, what do you make of this light? coming through the floor in a whisper it's not the right color so maybe it's not that bad yes well, do you think it's possible that there is a, a room beneath the floors here perhaps Mr. Uh, what was his name again the Ours? guy whose daughter the guy whose daughter strong was strong strong Mr. Strong's daughter could be... She may be held down there. Won't hurt to check, then. We got guns, they got knives. We're, we're probably better off. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. I'll just tell myself not that. I'm not too sure about that, but... I mean, we're already here, might as well. I... Just gotta find a way down. Uh, Henry will start looking for a trapdoor. We have uh, lanterns, but I'm hesitant to turn any of them on. Wish to draw more attention to this cabin and notify or, or let anyone know anyone else is in here. Mm. Yeah. Well, probably just try to at, get down at, there. At this, at this point, um, is everybody there? Is everyone's eyes beginning to adjust to the darkness? Um, uh, they they are adjusting. Yes, everyone is kind of standing around, and despite it being daytime, the the forest is so thick, and the branches are so entwined um, that it just creates. A natural darkness in here uh, that you have all finally uh, started to become adjusted to uh, with the exception of Samuel who is still trying to get his bearings um, but everyone else seems to seems to be doing okay and okay so the, the back in uh, the, the, the deputy just um, all right yeah Let's see if we can find a, a door leading down a cellar door or a trap yeah, door, or anything. Maybe yeah. uh, outside there might be like a um, one of those cellar doors down there. Mm -hmm. So you look yeah, around but... the room, and because Henry had said earlier that he was looking for a trap door, you look around the room, and off in the four corner, next next to the clothes hanging on pegs. You do see what looks like a cellar door that leads down further into the basement. Hmm. 
And the deputy takes a deep breath. And he goes, well, shall we? He looks at everyone. Mm. Might as well before I'm back out. And all this, as you guys walk towards the door, you look at the clothes on the peg. You're an elderly gentleman. Uh, you do have some experience. I want you to make a... Oh, um... Let me look here real quick. Intelligence. I want you to make an intelligence test as you're walking by and heading towards the cellar door. So, as you kind of creak, creak, walk across the floorboards, you know, they're, your weight causing them to bend underneath you. It's more obvious now that there is a cellar underneath you. You head towards the cellar door and you look to the clothes hanging on the hooks on the wall, on the pegs, and you absolutely recognize these as very very old Civil War uniforms. Okay. It's just something that you're aware of and that you notice. So you guys get to the cellar door and you open it and this stale air comes rushing up towards you. Air that hasn't been seen, the you know, the light of day in ages. The cellar door opens wide with this kind of creak and it thumps onto the floor as you let it drop. And there's a set of stairs, steps really, leading down further and you can still see the blue light creeping and crawling upwards from below the deputy kind of looks to one I think I should be the first one down there as he brings his shotgun kind of close and, and readies it. Let's go. So you start climbing down one by one with the deputy in the lead. The rest of you trailing behind him. He takes one step after another. His foot pushing down there's a creak, and there's a crack, and there's a creak as the wood moans underneath his feet. And he walks down with the rest of you behind him. Weapons at the ready. You all walk down there, and the blue light, the pale blue light, is oozing out seems to be just crawling out of several stone caskets all in an earthen basement with roots coming in through the underground in front of you. And with that, the scene goes black. That's it. Oh, <laughs> all right. That's and this is going to be a four session. Stop recording. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>